Welcome. I'm Cecile Green with France Sky Solutions, and I'm happy to be here today working with Lumio to bring you this video that will teach you how to make collective decisions that are more effective and efficient via a process called integrative consent. And I'm John with Lumio. The steps you'll learn in integrative consent are useful whether in person or online, and we believe all teams have something to gain by moving some decisions online. Before we get to the how-to, Cecile's going to share a few notes on the history of Round Sky's process. Integrative consent is an evolution upon sociocracy and holacracy's decision-making processes which evolved out of consensus. All of these bring great value to the world, but each have some limitations, which integrative consent transcends. The intent with integrative consent is to codify a clear process that reflects what's naturally happening when collective decision-making is working well so that we can reliably repeat it anytime we choose. So let's jump into the step-by-step -step of integrative consent. The first step is propose. And there are two ways this happens. First of all, proposal surfacing. And this happens within open discussion. It's often best if the person who raises the need for a proposal represents it for the group throughout this entire process as the proposal. And you'll see how that works as we go through the rest of the steps. But during proposal surfacing, it's their job to listen carefully for what could become a proposal. The second way to get a proposal is to have that proposer come in with an already prepared proposal in writing. Either way, the proposer gets something in writing as the initial proposal for step one. As facilitators of this process, it's really important to remember that it's not your choice as facilitator which option to take in step one. That choice belongs to the proposer. They get to choose whether it's proposal servicing or if they have a proposal already prepared. As the facilitator, it's, job, it's your job to help them do that efficiently by thinking with them and checking back with them to see if they have enough information to craft that proposal. Once we have that proposal in writing, however rough, we can move to step two. This round can include clarifying questions, sharing points of information, making any desired responses, including better ideas for the proposal on the table. If there are questions, it's the proposer who gets to answer them or delegate them to the person they think can best answer. During this step, it's very important for the proposer to be listening carefully and paying close attention to what's being shared for anything that they would like to change about their proposer, which is the third step. If you are facilitating this process synchronously, it's important to remember to keep this as a round and not open discussion. Step three, amend, is where the proposer makes changes to their proposal at their discretion based on the input they've received in step two. The proposer doesn't have to change anything or respond to everything that's been shared in step two. Their job is to change what they would feel would be best on behalf of the whole team, not just their or anyone else's personal preferences. Once we have an amended proposal, then we can move into step four, integrate. Integration is where things get interesting. During this phase, all team members are invited to present any objections they have, with objections being defined as what might cause harm to the team or organization. Now, how do we know if it might cause harm? This is a question that can open up a can of worms if there's not clear agreement about what is a valid objection. At the very least, we recommend that an objection needs to have a clear and reasoned case that can be made explicit. If the why of the objection is unclear, it may be impossible to integrate or waste a lot of time. Beyond that, there are a number of basic questions you, your group could ask of each objection to ensure that they will not just cause the team to go round and round in circles. We call these validation criterion. Your group will likely want to agree on the criterion that work best for you, but we think you may find these basic ones useful to get started. So a few examples of why we wouldn't want to consider every recent objection valid. Maybe my objection is based on a personal reason why I don't like a particular proposal. Perhaps we're deciding on our brand colors, and maybe I don't personally like red, but market research shows that our customers love red. My objection that I don't like red doesn't constitute harm to the whole. It's a reflection of my personal wishes. Another example might be that I've just had a better idea. 
but our ideas in general are great. And we definitely want to encourage them during the questions and comments, but not during integrate. And why? Because we'll be starting a better idea more. And uh, we could spend the rest of the year trying to decide whose idea is best, right? And depending on just how desperate our egos are, we could spend the team's valuable resources on doing just that. At this stage in the process, it's time to get to good enough for now, what's safe to try, and then garner data from real life and evolve the agreements later. And the third way in which objections are not valid is that they're based on predictive concern for which we have no current data. Are we afraid our customers hate red, or do we actually have market research? Predictive concerns can frankly just be wrong, and we can end up spending a lot of team resources trying to integrate predictive concerns, especially if we have no relevant experience that supports our concerns. Once all objections have been surfaced, then we can complete integration. This includes understanding the concerns and checking that each objection meets the validation criteria. Your facilitator should pick one objection at a time and integrate it via open discussion to create an amended version of the proposal. It's important that the proposal in its changed form still resolves the proposer's tension. In other words, it would be pointless to change the proposal so that it no longer addresses the need that put it on the table in the first place. Though how that need gets met may be very different than the way the proposer initially conceived. This process is repeated for all valid objections, remembering that new objections may be raised as we change the proposal. When there are no further objections, the proposal has passed. As we mentioned, there's a number of benefits to doing some of your consent processes online. So let's try it on Lumio. Let's say you're the proposer this time. You'll start with a new discussion thread. It's best if the title says what you're trying to do. In this case, sponsor the benefit dinner of a local charity. In the context, you'll frame the discussion and decision with relevant details and give people a sense of what the process will be. To guide the members of your group and to make it clear both where we're at and what's been shared and by whom, you'll use Lumio's facilitation tools to move this along. For this consent process, you'll only need the proposal tool. For this step, you'll remove all the voting buttons from this proposal because you're just inviting the group to share questions and comments at this stage. For the questions and comments step, a title like this can help. The text that's written directly under details may also help folks new to the process, but the main thing is to include the proposal text here or attach it. Next, set a sensible duration within which people can participate. Lumio will again alert the group 24 hours before this closes. So it might be ideal to align that notification with the time you think they'll be able to quickly respond. Now, you'll typically want to invite everyone from your group, but you can also push notifications to just select people if you wish. Everyone sees this page where people can leave comments, which, by the way, leave a nice record you can reference down the road. Looks like Mary and MJ responded right away, and MJ left a nice suggestion to donate more. Let's say this sounds great to you, so you can immediately incorporate this as we move into the next step, amendment. Once you've amended the proposal, you'll use the updated copy, the amended proposal's text, so that you can move into the last step of integration, which begins by calling for any objections. To do that, you'll start a new proposal and, this time, use the consent, abstain, objection, voting options. Again, include the amended proposal and make sure version 2 is also clearly labeled in the title. A good title might look like this, letting people know how to best participate and where you're at in the process. Again, all your group members come to this page. People will be able to vote and leave a reason, a short comment explaining their position. People can change their votes until the proposal duration is over and it closes allowing people to change their minds in response to new information or further thinking. You can see Mary's done good work of validating her objection already. Clearly, there is evident risk in donating to a group that has big bad press right now. However, let's imagine Mary's objection was not valid. Anyone in the group, maybe you or the facilitator, could invite her to change her vote. This way, you'll have a quick view of whose objections still need to be integrated. 
and ultimately you'll have a clear and accurate record how things ended. You can expect that not everyone will be writing such clear reasons and helping the process along like Mary is doing here, but luckily you can just have a conversation with your group members here in this thread so everyone learns, or you can contact an individual more privately. So let's work to integrate this objection. Mary's already invited an open discussion, as she doesn't have a clear suggestion as to how to integrate her concern. Ah, oh, wow, wouldn't you know it, MJ is coming back with great and very fortunate way to integrate this. We'll just fund another charity doing the exact same thing. So you'll start a new proposal so that everyone is clear on what their vote means, what the outcome will be if they consent making it really clear by naming it version 3 again, and you'll repeat the step as necessary if more objections come in for amended versions as you go. The final step is to share an outcome, to record your decision and let people know what's going to happen next. Many groups like to use this opportunity to communicate and record who's responsible for what. Notify them or your whole group. So now you can use Lumio to see how you arrived at the decision, all recorded in one place. The navigation icons here help you quickly return to key events. And that's it, outcome achieved. So in closing, the most important thing to remember with integrative consent is that we're aiming for decisions that are safe to try. You don't have to get either the process or the decision that comes out of it perfect for it to work and make a big difference for you and your team. You can muddle about a bit and see what happens, what questions emerge, and what's next for your team's collaboration needs. So get started today by sharing this article with your group and give it a try for free on Lumio at lumio.org. And for more information on integrative consent, including a demo video of the process in action and access to our cooperative decision-making toolkit with more tips and tricks to support you and your team's meaningful and efficient collaboration, go to roundskysolutions.com. Cheers. And happy world-changing to you and your groups.